welcome back as we look at those coming out from the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, looking at some of the 58,000 names etched in the black granite of those either killed or missing in Southeast Asia during that time in American history that our country was so divided. Joining us now, founder of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund that built the memorial, Jan Scruggs. Uh, Jan, noteworthy that this wasn't built with public money on the National Mall, but not with public uh, money. And I want to talk about a couple of the people whose names specifically inspired you to build this. Uh, Claude Van Andel, and we have some video of his name etched on the wall, just the same as so many other names. Tell us why you always think about this. Well, when I met him, he had already been wounded once and had malaria once. Uh, we were going into a, a very bad area, and he, he saw that we were walking into an ambush. And he alerted the captain. The captain said, keep going forward. So he sort of took the brunt of the initial firing of the ambush, which, which killed him. But he really, he gave his life to save other people. He's a great, and, and great you were, guy. You were there, you were there. I put him in a body bag and with six other people, we carried him to a helicopter 50 years ago on May 27th, uh, 1969. 50 years ago, almost exactly. Two days, two days from now. Uh, John David Pies, who also had a lot of the same issues uh, to deal with that you did coming back from uh, the war, and he was obviously there and he was killed there, but tell us how he uh, brought forth uh, this wall. There was an explosion, and uh, I was the first one there. I had uh, some medical equipment, and the, the truck was on fire, 2,000 pounds of explosives. John Pies is laying there dead and 12 other people are, are on fire, as is the truck. So uh, we got everybody, everything squared away. They all died. But that caused such post-traumatic stress disorder for me. I studied it, became an expert on it, and decided to build the Vietnam Veterans Memorial uh, as a result of what I went through. Their, their memory lives on in so many ways. And it, it, as you pointed out, 50 years since so many of these men have died. Is the memorial doing what it needs to do, not only to help remember those who died, but teach the next couple of generations who served, who didn't serve uh, in the way that you did uh, overseas about the horrors of war? It uh, stands as a very solemn testimony to the cost of war, the lives lost, and uh, I think it's doing its job in a fantastic way. Over five million people a year come to visit this incredible memorial, and it helps them to heal. It helps them to heal. Uh, take some pictures. We're going to look at some pictures of you from your time in Vietnam. Uh, Bob Scales, noted military historian, retired uh, general, uh, who lost friends and held them in his arms, as you did uh, in Vietnam, uh, said that war is becoming uh, too easy and that the horribleness of close combat uh, has been lost on our leaders is if they came here and walked past this wall and saw these names as so many uh, of America's leaders have, what's the message you'd want them to take away? Uh, I think long and hard about the human and the financial costs of war. We spend three trillion dollars in Afghanistan. I don't think it's going to turn out well. So maybe uh, that was one we could have avoided. But uh, so a memorial can only do so much. But this is a very trillions, poignant message. Trillions of dollars and 5,000 Americans yes. uh, who were lost there. We talked to two Gold Star mothers earlier who noted how much better of a job America is doing now right, right. than we did right. uh, during the time of Vietnam. Also probably do a lot to your work uh, in building this memorial. Uh, yes. Appreciate your time, sir, as always. Thank you. And your service overseas and your service uh, continuing to the country. Nice to be here. Thank appreciate you.